Ricky Ticky Tavi, Part 2. Hello, this is Natasha, and I'm dropping by to tell you the second part of Ricky Ticky Tavi by Rudyard Kipling. If you heard the first part on Story Nori, you'll know that this Ricky Ticky Tavi is a little animal that lives in India. He looks a little bit like a cat, and he's extremely brave and fights snakes. Ricky Ticky has come to live in a house with a small boy called Teddy. He's already fought a highly poisonous dust snake called Karait. But his biggest enemy is Nag, the cobra, who lives in the garden. When we left him last, Nag was planning to creep into the bathroom and kill Teddy's family. This is what he was saying to his wicked wife, Nagina. Now, when Karate was killed, the big man had a stick. He may still have that stick still, but when he comes in to bathe in the morning, he will not have a stick. I shall wait till he comes. Nagaina, do you hear me? I shall wait here in the cool till daytime. There was no answer from outside. So Ricky Ticky knew Nagaina had gone away. Nag coiled himself down, coil by coil, round the bulge at the bottom of the water jar, and Ricky Ticky stayed still as death. After an hour, he began to move, muscle by muscle, towards the jar. Nag was asleep, and Ricky Ticky looked at his big back wondering which would be the best place for a good hold. If I don't break his back at the first jump, said Ricky, he can still fight. And if he fights, oh, Ricky! He looked at the thickness of the neck below the hood, but that was too much for him, and a bite near the tail would only make Nag savage. It must be the head, he said at last. The head above the hood, and when I am once there, I must not let go. Then he jumped. The head was lying a little clear of the water underneath the curve of it, and as his teeth met, Ricky braced his back against the bulge of the red earthenware to hold down the head. This gave him just one second's purchase, and he made the most of it. Then he was battered to and fro as a rat is shaken by a dog, to and fro on the floor, up and down, and around in great circles. But his eyes were red, and he held on as the body cart whipped over the floor, upsetting the tin dipper and the soap dish and the flesh brush, and banged against the tin side of the bath. As he held, he closed his jaws tighter and tighter for he was sure he would be banged to death, and for the honour of his family, he preferred to be found with his teeth locked. He was dizzy, aching, and felt shaken to pieces, when something went off like a thunderclap just behind him. A hot wind knocked him senseless, and red fire singed his fur. The big man had been wakened by the noise and had fired both barrels of a shotgun into Nag just behind the hood. Ricky Ticky held on with his eyes shut, for now he was quite sure he was dead. But the head did not move, and the big man picked him up and said, It's the mongoose again, Alice. The little chap has saved our lives now. Then Teddy's mother came in with a very white face and saw what was left of Nag. And Ricky Ticky dragged himself to Teddy's room and spent half the rest of the night shaking himself tenderly to find out whether he really was broken into forty pieces as he fancied. When morning came, he was still very stiff, but well pleased with his doings. Now I have an Agina to settle with, and she will be worse than five nags, 
and there's no knowing when of the eggs that she spoke of will hatch. Goodness, I must go and see Darcy, he said. Without waiting for breakfast, Ricky Ticky ran to the thorn bush where Darcy was singing a song of triumph at the top of his voice. The news of Nag's death was all over the garden, for the sweeper had thrown the body on the rubbish heap. Oh, you stupid tuft of feathers, said Ricky Ticky angrily. Is this the time to sing? Nag is dead, is dead, is dead. The valiant Ricky Ticky caught him by the head and held fast. The big man brought the bang stick and Nag fell into two pieces. He will never eat my babies again. All that's true enough. But where's Nagina? said Ricky Ticky, looking carefully around him. Nagaina came to the bathroom sleuth and called for Nag, Darcy went on, and Nag came out on the end of a stick. The sweeper picked him on the end of a stick and threw him upon the rubbish heap. Let us sing about the great, the red-eyed Ricky Ticky. And Darcy filled his throat and sang. If I could get up to your nest, I'd roll your babies out, said Ricky Ticky. You don't even know when to do the right thing at the right time. You're safe enough in your nest there, but it's war for me down here. For the great, the beautiful Ricky Ticky's sake, I will stop, said Darcy. What is it, O oh killer of the terrible nag? Where is Nagina for the third time? On the rubbish heap by the stables, mourning for nag. Great is Ricky Dicky with the white teeth. Bother my white teeth! Have you ever heard where she keeps her eggs? In the melon bed, on the end nearest the wall, where the sun strikes nearly all day. She hid them there three weeks ago. And you never thought it would be worthwhile to tell me? The end nearest the wall, you said. Ricky Ticky, you are not going to eat her eggs? Not exactly, no, Darcy. If you have a grain of sense, you will fly off to the stables and pretend that your wing is broken and let Nagina chase you away to this bush. I must get to the melon bed, and if I went there now, she must see me. Darcy was a feather-brained little fellow who could never hold more than one idea at a time in his head. And just because he knew that Nagina's children were born in eggs like his own, he didn't think at first that it was fair to kill them. But his wife was a sensible bird, and she knew that cobra's eggs meant young cobras later on. So she flew off from the nest and left Darzi to keep the babies warm and continue his song about the death of Nag. She fluttered in front of Nagina by the rubbish heap and cried out, Oh, my wing is broken. The boy in the house threw a stone at me and broke it. Then she fluttered more desperately than ever. Nagaina lifted up her head and hissed, You warned Ricky Ticky when I would have killed him. Indeed, and truly you've chosen a bad place to be lame in. And she moved towards Darzee's wife, slipping along over the dust. The boy broke it with a stone, shrieked Darzee's wife. Well, it may be some consolation to you when you're dead to know that I shall settle accounts with the boy. 
My husband lies on the rubbish heap this morning, but before night the boy in the house will lie very still. What is the use of running away? I am sure to catch you. Little fool, look at me. Darcy's wife knew better than to do that. For a bird who looks at a snake's eyes gets so frightened that she cannot move. Darcy's wife fluttered on, piping sorrowfully and never leaving the ground, and Nagina quickened her pace. Ricky Ticky heard them going up the path before the stables, and he raced for the end of the melon patch near the wall. There, in the warm litter above the melons, very cunningly hidden, he found twenty-five eggs, about the size of a bantaman's eggs, but with whitish skin instead of shell. I was not a day too soon, he said, for he could see the baby cobras curled up inside the skin. And he knew that the minute they were hatched, they could each kill a man or a mongoose. He bit off the tops of the eggs as fast as he could, taking care to crush the young cobras, and turned over the litter from time to time to see whether he had missed any. At last, there were only three eggs left, and Ricky Ticky began to chuckle to himself. When he heard Darcy's wife screaming, Ricky Ticky, I led Nagina toward the house and she's gone into the veranda and oh, come quickly, she means killing. Ricky Ticky smashed two eggs and tumbled backward down the melon bed with a third egg in his mouth and scuttled to the veranda as hard as he could put foot to the ground. Teddy and his mother and father were there at early breakfast. But Ricky Ticky saw that they were not eating anything. They sat stone still, and their faces were white. Nagina was coiled up on the matting by Teddy's chair, within easy striking distance of Teddy's bare leg, and she was swaying to and fro, singing a song of triumph. Son of the big man that killed Nag, she hissed. Stay still. I am not ready yet. Wait a little. Keep very still, all you three. If you move, I strike. And if you do not move, I strike. Oh, foolish people who killed my nag. Teddy's eyes were fixed on his father. And all his father could do was to whisper. Sit still, Teddy. You mustn't move, Teddy. Keep still. Then Ricky Ticky came up and cried, Turn round, Nagina! Turn and fight! All in good time, said she, without moving her eyes. I will settle my account with you presently. Look at your friends, Ricky Ticky. They are still white. They are afraid. They dare not move. And if you come a step nearer, I strike. Look at your eggs, said Ricky Ticky, in the melon bed near the wall. Go and look, Nagina. The big snake turned half around and saw the egg on the veranda. <gasps> Give it to me, she said. Ricky Ticky put his paw on one side of the egg and his eyes were blood red. What price for a snake's egg? For a young cobra? For a young king cobra? For the last, the very last of the brood? The ants are eating all the others down by the melon bed. 
Nagina spun clear round, forgetting everything for the sake of the one egg. Ricky Ticky saw Teddy's father shoot out a big hand, catch Teddy by the shoulder, and drag him across the little table with the teacups safe and out of reach of Nagina. Trick, 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 tick, 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 chuckled Ricky Ticky. The boy is safe, and it was I, I, I that caught Nag by the hood last night in the bathroom. Then he began to jump up and down, all four feet together, his head close to the floor. He threw me to and fro, but he could not shake me off. He was dead before the big man blew him in two. I did it. Rick, tick, 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 tick. Come then, Nagina. Come and fight with me. You shall not be a widow long. Nagina saw that she had lost her chance of killing Teddy, and the egg lay between Ricky Ticky's paws. Give me the egg, Ricky Ticky. Give me the last of my eggs. Give me the egg, Ricky Ticky. Give me the last of my eggs, and I will go away and never come back, she said, lowering her hood. Yes, you will go away, and you will never come back, for you will go to the rubbish heap with Nag. Fight, widow! The big man has gone for his gun. Fight! Ricky Ticky was bounding all around Nagina, keeping just out of reach of her stroke, his little eyes like hot coals. Nagina gathered herself together and flung out to him. Ricky Ticky jumped up and backward. Again and again she struck, and each time her head came with a whack on the matting of the veranda, and she gathered herself up together like a watch spring. Then Ricky Ticky danced in a circle to get behind her, and the gyna spun round to keep her head to his head so that the rustle of her tail on the matting sounded like dry leaves blown along by the wind. He had forgotten the egg. It still lay on the veranda, and the gyna came nearer and nearer to it, till at last, while Ricky Ticky was drawing breath, she caught it in her mouth, turned to the veranda steps, and flew like an arrow down the path with Ricky Ticky behind her. When the cobra runs for her life, she goes like a whiplash, flicked across a horse's neck. Ricky Ticky knew that he must catch her, or the whole trouble would begin again. She headed straight for the long grass by the thorn bush, and as he was running, Ricky Ticky heard Darzee still singing his foolish little song of triumph. But Darzee's wife was wiser. She flew off her nest as Nagina came along and flapped her wings about Nagina's head. If Darzee had helped, they might have turned her. But Nagina only lowered her hood and went on. Still, the instant's delay brought Ricky Ticky up to her, and as she plunged into the rat hole where she and Nag used to live, his little white teeth were clenched on her tail, and he went down with her, and very few mongooses, however old and wise they may be, care to follow a cobra into its hole. It was dark in the hole, and Ricky Ticky never knew when it might open out and give Nagina room to turn and strike him. He held on savagely and stuck out his feet to act as brakes on the dark slope of the hot, moist earth. Then the grass by the mouth of the hole stopped waving, and Darzi said, it's all over with Ricky Ticky. We must sing his death song. Valiant Ricky Ticky is dead. For Nagina will surely kill him underground. 
So he sang a very mournful song that he made up on the spur of the minute. And just as he had got to the most touching part, the grass quivered again. And Ricky Ticky, covered with dirt, dragged himself out of the hole leg by leg, licking his whiskers. Darzee stopped with a little shout. Ricky Ticky shook some of the dust out of his fur and sneezed. It's all over, he said. The widow will never come out again. And the red ants that lived between the grass stems heard him and began to troop down one after another to see if he had spoken the truth. Ricky Ticky curled himself up in the grass and slept where he was. Slept and slept till it was late in the afternoon, for he had done a hard day's work. Now, he said when he woke, I will go back to the house, tell the coppersmith, Darcy, and he will tell the garden that Nagina is dead. The coppersmith is a bird who makes a noise exactly like the beating of a little hammer on a copper pot. And the reason he is always making it is because he is the town crier to every Indian garden and tells all the news to everybody who cares to listen. As Ricky Ticky went up the path, he heard his attention notes like a tiny dinner gong and then the steady... Ding dong tuck Nag is dead Dong Nagaina is dead Ding dong tuck That set all the birds in the garden singing and the frogs croaking for Nag and Nagaina used to eat frogs as well as little birds. When Ricky got to the house, Teddy and Teddy's mother, she looked very white still for she had been fainting and Teddy's father came out and almost cried over him. And that night he ate all that was given to him till he could eat no more and went to bed on Teddy's shoulder. Teddy's mother saw him when she came to look late at night. He saved our lives and Teddy's life, she said to her husband. Just think, he saved all our lives. Ricky Ticky woke with a jump, for the mongooses are light sleepers. Oh, it's you, said he. What are you bothering for? All the cobras are dead. And if they weren't, I'm here. Ricky Ticky had a right to be proud of himself. But he did not grow too proud. And he kept that garden as a mongoose should keep it. With tooth and jump and spring and bite. Till never a cobra dared show its head inside the walls. And that's the story of Ricky Ticky Tarvey. And Bertie is reminding me that there's a poem that goes with that story. Ricky Ticky Tarvey at the hole where he went in. Red eye call to wrinkled skin. Hear what little red eye saith. Nag, come up and dance with death. Eye to eye and head to head. Keep the measure, Nag. This shall end when one is dead. At thy pleasure, Nag. Turn for turn and twist for twist. Run and hide thee, Nag. Ha! The hooded death has missed. Woe betide thee, Nag. Well, that was very dramatic. I'll be back with another story soon. But until then, from me, Natasha, 
Bye-bye.